100% mechanical keyboards have been getting quite popular in the last years. With a layout that's as small as it gets without too many compromises, they seem to get a high adoption rate. The Vortex Poker was one of the first models that became popular, but more recently the Anpro and other cheap 60% keyboard variants are getting a lot of praise. And I was lucky enough to test most of these boards. Now, I wanted to try something new, and by something new, I mean building my own 60% mechanical keyboard from scratch. All of the parts needed for this build were provided by Banggood, and I will have links to where you can find them in the description. So without waiting any further, let's build that thing. For this build, we will use this gorgeous walnut case. While there are cheaper options available that are made out of plastic, I really like the look of this one. We will also need a PCB, and this one is the Satan GH60. It supports a whole lot of layouts, and you can use both plate mounted or PCB mounted switches. It features a mini USB port, and all the diodes and resistors are pre soldered, which means we'll only have to solder the switches. Speaking of switches, I went with Gatoron Browns, which is what's on my AND Pro at work, and I like them a lot. The ones I got come in packs of 10, so you would need 7 of them for the 61 switches needed, but depending on the layout you choose, you might need more or less. In my case, I only got 60 switches, as I had a few others laying around from another project. The switches I ordered are plate mount switches, but PCB mounted switches would work too. In fact, the ones I have left are PCB mount ones, so it will be a mix and match on that part. Also, quick tip, PCB mount switches are listed as 5 pin while plate mounted ones are listed as 3 pin switches. Then I also got stabilizers, 4 of the smaller ones and another one for the space bar. I also got a plate, this is optional but I think it looks better and it will make the keyboard feel sturdier. And finally I went with Dolch Team DSA keycaps, these are made out of PBT which is great and I like the font they used for the legends. It's a full size kit so we'll have leftovers but these are great for things like macro board projects. All in all, this would cost around $130, but you can save a lot if you go with cheaper keycaps, no plates, or a cheaper case. So enough with the parts list, we'll start by installing the stabilizers. But first, I tested the PCB to make sure every key registered. To do that, I simply used a tweezer and connected the contact points where the switches would go. I used KeyboardTester.com to do so. Now for the stabilizers, it's pretty simple, I simply inserted them as shown in the video. Make sure the pins are fully inserted though, as they can seem to be fully down but when you look under, the pin is not completely in. The metal rod should be downward for the two unit stabilizers and it should be up for the spacebar stabilizer. Then I installed all my switches in the plate. Most of the switches stay in there fine but when there's a section that allows multiple layouts, they don't hold on as well. At those places, I used PCB mounted switches for added strength. I also did that at the four corners of the PCB to secure the plate before any soldering. Most people start by soldering the corners first to do that, but if you use PCB mounted switches, I think that's even better for that purpose. Another thing to be careful about is to have all the switches metal pins straight. That way they will fit in the soldering rings that were designed for them. Now assembling the plate and switches with the PCB is a delicate task. Make sure you are careful. You have to make sure that all the pins go through the holes of your PCB, as well as in the right spot depending on the layout you want to achieve. A better way to do it would be to use PCB mounted switches first in the four corners to lock the plate in place and install the PCB at the same time. And then fill the plate and the PCB with the remaining switches. I think that would be easier than the way I did it. Anyway, after that step, I made sure that my layout was correct by installing my keycaps in place. You don't need to install all of them, only the ones that have multiple layout options, so pretty much only the modifier keys. Now it's soldering time! I soldered all the switches in, one by one by soldering both of the pins for each switch. I tried to use a clamp first to make sure the switch was completely sitting on the board, but I resigned to applying force on the board while soldering instead. It all went well until I found this. Oh no! One of the switches had one of its pin bent. So again, make sure you double check these before the soldering step. Fortunately, I was able to fill the hole with solder and it made contact with the pin, but this switch won't be as solid compared to the others. 
I then finished the rest of the board and tested it afterward. All the switches were working. I then proceeded to install the board in the wooden case. The screws and screwdriver come with the case so you won't need to buy hardware on the side. Then I installed the keycaps. I might have flipped some of them backward as I'm used to playing keycaps nowadays and I don't exactly remember how the font should look on a board. These are DSA profile keycaps so all rows have the same shape. I really like how they look as it makes the board look less chunky than regular keycaps. So this is what the final result looks like. I'm really pleased with it. From the wooden case to the DSA keycaps and the overall feel of the switches, this thing is amazing. If only they made this PCB with a Type-C connector, this would be a pretty darn perfect 60% board. I also had another similar board to this one with the same case but in yellow rosewood and blank keycaps instead. That board is the poker for which I changed the case and keycaps. The case on the poker looks a bit better, it has less imperfections and feels a bit more pro, but that might be due to the wood they used too, which might be easier to work with or not. It also has cherry brown switches instead of Gateron, so it feels a bit different, but both keyboards are amazing, I think. The poker stabilizers are a bit better though, as they're genuine cherry stabilizers. To give you an idea, here's a little sound comparison. Now that's all good, but one of the great features of this board is the programmability. In my case, I kept it pretty minimal for now, but I might add new layers someday. To do so, you need two programs, Easy AVR and Flip. And I will try to have links in the description to know where you can find them. Using Easy AVR, you can load a new layout using the GH Satan hardware config with the poker layout. Then you can edit it as you wish. I only added a function 1 button instead of the right click in the default layer. This will let me access layer 1 when I press down this key. Then in my layer 1, I set WASD as arrow keys, escape as the tilt key, and the number row as function keys. That's quite similar to the default layout my end pro and poker came with, and that's what I'm used to, so we'll go with that, but the possibilities are endless depending on what you like. When you're satisfied, you can export the layout using the build option and choosing a file name. The software might warn you that you didn't set a boot key, but there's one at the back of the GH60 PCB, so we're good. Then using flip, you will select a target device and that will be the Atmega 32U4. Then you will press the reset button on the PCB and select the communication medium that will be USB. Then you will select your X file click run, and when it's done, click on start application. And it should now be reprogrammed. Again, if you want to make this project, make sure you know the basics of soldering. And I would recommend that you watch Thai Keyboard or Rhino Feed's video about it. They both made really similar builds to mine and they go a bit more in depth in terms of soldering. But even they recommend that you watch videos specific to soldering. Affiliate links will be in the description, so feel free to use them if you want to make that project and support the channel at the same time. So hope you guys enjoyed, make sure you liked the video if you did, and if you didn't, just let me know what I should change down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.